Welcome back guys, moving on to another question in the velocity section. So you can swim at a speed of four kilometers per hour. If you swim directly across a river that has a current of two kilometers per hour, part A, what is your result in velocity? Part B, if the river is six kilometers wide, how long will it take to reach the other side? And then part C, how far downstream will you be once you reach the other side? So, Starting off with part A, what is your result in velocity? We can draw a diagram for this. So let's say that these are two shores of a river. And then uh, let's say that this way here is uh, downstream. Meaning that um, the current is going this way. There's a current for the river going that way. And we're told that you can swim at a speed of four kilometers per hour, and you're gonna swim directly across the river. So let's say you're starting here. That means you're gonna swim directly across. So we can draw a vector like this. Now, because we're dealing with speed or velocity, we don't have to go right to the end. We can just draw a vector here, just making sure that it's going uh, directly up. And then this vector here, that is four, four kilometers per hour. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna be swimming this way and you're gonna encounter a current of two kilometers per hour. And since we said that this way is downstream, the current is gonna be going this way, like that. So this is two kilometers per hour. So what's gonna be your resultant velocity? Well, it's gonna be from here right to there. So that's your resultant, right? So you're swimming directly across the river at four kilometers per hour, and then the current is taking you two kilometers per hour this way. So really, you're gonna end up swimming a bit to the right. And we're solving for the resultant velocity, so we're gonna need the magnitude of this vector. We're also gonna need the direction, so we can solve for this theta here. In the triangle. So notice that uh, this is a right angle triangle. You're, swim uh, you're swimming directly across the river and then the current is perpendicular to you swimming right across. So this here is 90 degrees. So notice we could solve for the magnitude of this vector using Pythagoras theorem because it's a 90 degree, it's a right angle triangle. So r squared is 4 squared plus 2 squared. So this would be 16 plus 4, 20. So the resultant velocity is root 20 kilometers per hour. Or if you want this in decimals, this would be 4.47 kilometers per hour. And then solving for this theta here to get the direction, so we got tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, so two over four. And then when you inverse that, you end up getting uh, 26.56 degrees. So that's this theta here. Now, a lot of times they'll express this result in velocity in terms of the angle to the shore, relative to the shore. So notice that from here to here, this is 90 degrees. And because this is 26.56 degrees, 90 minus 26.56 would give us 63 point, what, 44 degrees. So the final answer is that the resultant velocity is 4.47 kilometers per hour or root 20 kilometers per hour, 63.4 degrees relative to shore. All right, so a lot of times they want you to express the direction relative to the shore. So you would just subtract this theta from 90 degrees. And then moving on to part B, if the river is six kilometers wide, how long will it take to reach the other side? So notice in this question how we are given a distance of six kilometers, 
But up until this point, we've just been dealing with speeds. And notice that this diagram that we had in part A when we found that resultant velocity, everything was in terms of speed, in terms of kilometers per hour. So we can't just take the fact that the river is six kilometers wide, which is this distance, and put it into this triangle because this triangle here is dealing with speeds. So you actually have to make a separate triangle to answer this question. So this here would be uh, six kilometers. And then we would draw that same triangle there. So this triangle and this triangle are pretty much the same. They have the same angles. They're similar triangles. But this triangle that we're drawing here is going to be dealing with distance. And this triangle here deals with speed, kilometers per hour. So you always want to make sure that you're drawing two separate triangles if you're dealing with both speed and distance in a question. So same thing. This is 90 degrees. That means this here is 90 degrees. And these two triangles are similar. So if you notice, this here would be that same angle we saw for 26.56 degrees. So notice that you're going to be swimming in this direction here. So you're going to be swimming along this line, and you're going to reach the shore at this point. So we know the speed at which you are swimming. And if we can find out the distance at which you're going to swim along this line, then we can figure out how long it's going to take. Because as you know, time is equal to what? Distance over speed. So we got to find the distance in this triangle. The speed, we already have this resultant speed, which is root 20 kilometers per hour or 4.47 kilometers per hour. So really, all we have to find is this distance over here. And this is a right angle triangle. So notice that we can use cos. So we can say cos of 26.56 is equal to the adjacent side 6 over that distance that we are solving for. And then you would just cross multiply isolate for that distance, so you would have 6 over cos of 26.56. And when you do that calculation, you end up getting 6.7 kilometers. So this distance that you're going to swim along this line, 6.7 kilometers. So the distance, 6.7 kilometers, divided by the speed at which you're swimming on that line, on this line here, which is root 20 kilometers per hour. So this is uh, kilometers, this is kilometers per hour. And when you do that calculation, you end up getting 1.5 hours. So basically an hour and 30 minutes. So that is the answer to part B, 1.5 hours, All right? So just be careful when you're dealing with distance and speed. You got to make two separate triangles. They're going to be similar triangles. They're going to have the same angles. This is 26.56. This is 26.56. But the lengths, the units you're going to be dealing with are different. And then you could combine them in certain calculations that you're looking for, like time. And then part C, how far downstream will you be once you reach the other side? What are they asking for? They're asking for a distance. How far downstream? So which triangle are we going to use? We're going to be using this triangle. And when they ask you how far downstream you're going to be, they're pretty much asking for this distance here. It's the same as this distance. So you started here, and then you're going to end up over here when you reach the other side. So how far downstream, what's that horizontal distance going to be? It's basically this distance, which is the same as this up here. If we draw this triangle. So you can solve, let's call this maybe x. You can solve for that horizontal distance with this same triangle using what? Tan, right? 
we got the opposite, adjacent, and then the angle. So we can say 10 of 26.56 degrees equals x over 6. So then to solve for x, we're just going to cross multiply. So x is basically going to be 6 times 10 of 26.56. And when you do that, you end up getting 3 kilometers. So that's the answer to part C. That's this distance, how far downstream you are once you reach that other side. So that there is 3 kilometers. And we answered all three questions.